On September 29, 1918, Frank Luke Jr., America's current Ace of Aces, died. The 21-year-old Ace then had 18 confirmed victories to his name, not to mention several unconfirmed ones. Astonishingly, all of these were achieved within the space of only 17 days. The morning of the 29th, Frank Luke returned to his home base at Rombecourt, France, after an unauthorized flight the previous day. His commanding officer, fed up with his constant non-compliance to regulations, issued an order to ground Frank. Before the order could be officially served, Frank Luke took off from Rombecourt and flew to a forward airfield near Verdun. Incensed, his commander issued an arrest order for him to be carried out as soon as Frank Luke landed. However, Jerry Vasconcells, the commanding officer at the forward airfield, and a friend of Frank's, ignored the order, instead clearing Frank Luke for a lone sortie at 5.56 p.m. Little did Vasconcells know that this flight would be the young ace's last. Frank Luke left the B-Flight Aerodrome at precisely 5.56 p.m. After taking off, he turned west and flew to the American 7th Balloon Company at Avocua. At Avocua, Frank Luke dropped a note to the American troops below, letting them know to watch for burning German balloons. He then headed east and crossed no man's land. His target? German observation balloons. Frank Luke first attacked a balloon belonging to the German observation unit, Balloonzug 115. After two passes, he damaged it, forcing it down. He then left the area and flew northwest to Balloonzug 95, stationed at the French town Azad et Soumesad. Frank Luke destroyed the balloon there and continued his northwest run, flying to Balloonzook 35, based near Mirbo. American soldiers watched from across the trenches as Frank Luke attacked. A sergeant from the 162nd Infantry recalled that Frank Luke climbed into a near stall and then slipped into a dive to attack again. With two balloons to his credit and another taken out of action, Frank Luke decided to head for home. He probably hoped the news of his new victories would assuage his commander's fiery temper. It is certain that Frank Luke had no idea about the arrest order waiting for him back at Rombacur. He would never get the chance to find out. As Frank Luke flew over Mirvo, German anti-aircraft guns opened fire on him. While he dodged the shells, 
A small machine gun team watched him intensely. Frank never saw them. Frank Luke always had been a daredevil. Fellow ace Eddie Rickenbacker commented that Frank Luke was perfectly blind to the enormous risk he ran. Jerry Vasconcells also said of him, he has no imagination. He can't imagine anything happening to him. He thinks he's invincible. Nevertheless, it seemed as though Frank Luke possessed a charmed life. But even one such as he could not push his luck forever. Shortly after attacking Balloon 35 at Mirko, Frank Luke was shot by a machine gun on top of the nearby hill. A single bullet crashed through his right shoulder, puncturing both his lungs. The wound was fatal, but Frank Luke would not die just yet. Immediately after being hit, Frank Luke landed his plane just outside of Mirbo. He forced himself out of the plane and started southwest on foot in the direction of the Allied lines. Frank Luke had vowed never to be captured alive. When he could see the Germans coming to capture him, Frank Luke drew his pistol and, as the sight faded from his eyes, fired three defiant shots at them. He was dead by the time they arrived. There would be no more flights for Frank Luke. No more victories, no more glory. For him, it all ended in a field near Mirbo. But the story continues. Frank Luke was laid to rest behind Mirbo's small village church. Less than two months later, an armistice was signed and Germany surrendered. The First World War was finally over. Shortly thereafter, officers from the American Graves Registration Commission visited Mirbo. While they were there, they discovered a simple wooden cross marked Unknown American Aviator. When they asked the French locals about it, the world heard the story of Frank Luke Jr.'s dramatic last stand for the first time. Now, nearly 100 years later, the legend lives on in the hearts and minds of those who will not forget. One question remains, will we too remember? Or will the legacy of Frank Luke's generation be allowed to die and fade away forgotten? Only we can decide.